Hi, I'm Elise and welcome to Witch Way. This Witch Law review is on the Harry Potter film series. The first Harry Potter film was released in 2001 with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Seven films later, the series wrapped up in 2011 with the final film, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. These films star Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Emma Watson as Hermione Granger, and Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley, among many other amazing actors. For the uninitiated, these films follow Harry Potter, an orphan and raised by muggles, non-magic folk. He is suddenly thrust into the world of magic and we are introduced to it along with him. From his enrollment into Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry to his friendships and lessons within the school, he also discovers his connection with the dark wizard Voldemort, who is again rising to power. Harry and the allegiances he has formed stand in the way of the Dark Lord's return and the battle between the forces of good and evil must be fought. These films are of course based off of the book series of the same names and I will be looking into both of these to find the real world connections that inspired some of the characters and themes of the Harry Potter universe. <laughs> This series took some of the stereotypical witch tropes and turned them on their head. Not only was the flying broomstick a method of transport, but also a means of entertainment in the sport of Quidditch. Many in the magical community still sport pointed hats, and their familiars became a useful resource in delivering mail. Harry's Hogwarts book list is often delivered via our post, and he needs to fill this list by taking a trip to Diagon Alley. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to visit the recreated set of Diagon Alley at the Harry Potter Studio Tour, which was absolutely fascinating. At least two stores in Diagon Alley draw inspiration from connections with real world people who were accused of witchcraft. Most Potter fans would be familiar with the clothing shop, Madame Malcolm's Robes for Every Occasion. Viewers on my channel will know that this has a connection with the Pendle Witch Trials. Malcolm Tower was the home of Elizabeth Southerns, also known as Old Demdike, who was one of the accused. Malcolm Tower is mentioned in Thomas Potts's the wonderful discovery of witches in the county of Lancashire. Titles weren't short back then. Which records the trials in full. It's alleged that the witches' coven would meet in Malkin Tower, which in reality is probably nothing more than a cottage or farmhouse. The real world location has yet to be determined. The second store is Mr. Molepepper's Apothecary. This is a play on the name of Nicholas Culpepper, who published The Complete Herbal in 1653 in English to make it more accessible to the poor and educated them on the uses of easily foraged remedies. Most of the scientific documents at the time were published in Latin to keep educated physicians privy to the knowledge, so they were none too happy that he was practically giving their secrets away for free. This is probably what led him to being accused of witchcraft, to try and tarnish his reputation, though it did not work and he was acquitted of these charges. The go-to bookstore in Diagon Alley for Harry to purchase books on his subjects of study, such as Potions, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Care of Magical Creatures and Transfiguration, was Flourish and Blots. This is also where Harry purchases Unfogging the Future by Cassandra Vablatsky. This is probably a nod to real-world cultist and co-founder of the Theosophical Society, Helena Blavatsky. If you want to know more about this fascinating person, there is an amazing podcast episode by Occult Confessions, which I will link in the info box below. Harry needs this book to start his divination class, which is taught by Professor Sybil Trelawney. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. 
Her name probably comes from the Sibyls of ancient Greece, who were prophets, and Professor Trelawney's ancestor is another with prophetic origins in Greek mythology, Cassandra Trelawney. Cassandra was also from Greek mythology and was cursed to utter true prophecies, though she was never to be believed. We know at least a couple of Professor Trelawney's prophecies are true, one of which was spoken to the Hogwarts headmaster, Professor Albus Dumbledore. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. Professor Dumbledore was known for his 12 uses on dragon blood and was known to work with alchemist Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel? Uh, who's Nicholas Flamel? I don't know. Nicholas Flamel was indeed a real person born in 1340, and his wife Perinelle is also mentioned in the Harry Potter universe. Though he was a scribe and he died in 1480, but after his death, a legend was born. It surmised that Nicholas Flamel was really an alchemist and succeeded in creating the, wait for it, Philosopher's Stone, which turned lead into gold, and that he and his wife Perinal achieved immortality through drinking the elixir of life. Though there is no evidence that he was an alchemist, the legend still persists. Flamel is also mentioned on the back of Dumbledore's Chocolate Frog trading card. Ron, who collects these cards, mentions he still needs Agrippa and Ptolemy. Agrippa is referencing the occultist Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. One of his best known works is the Diocultia Philosophia Tribulatri, or the three books concerning occult philosophy. The second card refers to astronomer and astrologer Claudius Ptolemy, known for his astronomy works such as the um, Almagist? Almagist. Almagist, which describes many constellations, which coincidentally are the namesake for many members of the Black family tree, such as Andromeda, Draco, and Sirius. Sirius Black made his first appearance in The Prisoner of Azkaban. This film took elements from Shakespeare's Macbeth, with its tagline of Something Wicked This Way Comes, and the Song of the Witches made its way into the Hogwarts Choir's songbook. Shakespeare's witches were known as the Weird Sisters. Of course, this is also the name of the band that plays at the Yule Ball in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Arthurian legend is also referenced in the series with the wizard Merlin, apparently one of the most famous wizards in the Harry Potter universe. Merlin's beard. The Order of Merlin is also an award bestowed upon those who achieve greatness, such as Albus Dumbledore, and Gildery Lockhart boasts of his award as he enters his Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. In later films, symbols can be seen on the floor of this classroom, and other symbols are seen in Transfiguration class and in the Room of Requirement. Most of these seem only inspired by and similar to real occult symbols, though in an extended still of Quirrell's classroom from the first film, we can see this symbol from the Lesser Key of Solomon. Also in this film, we briefly see a portrait of Anne Boleyn. There were indeed rumours that Anne Boleyn practised witchcraft, so perhaps in the universe of Harry Potter, she did. These films score for lore, history and the craft, and they drew inspiration from a lot of mythology. So if you want to know more about that, I highly recommend checking out Harry Potter A History of Magic, which goes into the mythology that inspired the universe, and the documentary of the same name, which goes through the British Library's Harry Potter exhibition. This one was suggested by one of my viewers a while ago, Jo, so she actually got to go and visit this exhibition. Jealous? I know I am. Did you know that this isn't the first character named Harry Potter to hit the screen? Harry Potter Jr. and Sr. make an appearance in the 1986 film Troll. Harry Potter Jr. expected to have a little trouble getting adjusted in his new neighborhood. I don't think many people were too worried with the impact that that film had on their youth, but apparently with the Harry Potter films, they were. 
Harry Potter caused quite a stir with some people, believing that it encouraged children to practice witchcraft. So much so that in 2001, a documentary was made called Harry Potter Witchcraft Repackaged, where they try and make this case. I think it's absolutely hilarious and I think you will too. Um, go and check it out yourself. I will make sure I include it in the links below. Wow. Not surprisingly, this didn't stop the film's success and it's been 20 years since Harry Potter first hit our screens. So of course, time for an anniversary special. On New Year's Day, we will be able to see Harry Potter Return to Hogwarts, which interviews cast members about the legacy of the film. So that one will be fun to revisit. Many of those who have been in Harry Potter films have also made appearances as magic users elsewhere. I love looking through actors' back catalogues to see what else they've been in. Since there are so many films, there is also an extensive cast. So it would take me a while to go through each of these individually, but feel free to pause and take note as we flip through. But one actor stood out among the rest as a repeat offender. In a good way, Miranda Richardson, who portrays the acid-tongued Rita Skeeter, has also appeared in Snow White, the fairest of them all, as the evil Queen Elsbeth, Sleepy Hollow as both Lady Van Tassel and the Witch Crone, in Merlin as Queen Mab and the Lady of the Lake, and in Good Omens as psychic Madame Tracy. I actually can't wait for Good Omens Season 2 to come out next year, and I also can't wait to play the new Hogwarts Legacy game that is scheduled for a 2022 release. Let me know your favourite Harry Potter occult connection. I feel like maybe a rebrand is in order. Occult Connections, I like that name. TM, but I digress. Tell me your favorite witchy series and movie recommendations in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more on The Witch Way.